Floods in Iran have killed at least 60 people. Iran has been experiencing exceptionally heavy rain for the past two weeks. Hundreds of cities and villages have been flooded and crops have been destroyed. And more rain is expected this weekend. For more on the impact of the floods in Iran, I'm joined now by Kaveh Madani. He was previously serving as the deputy head of Iran's Department of the Environment, and he joins us now from New Haven, Connecticut. Kaveh, thank you so much for making time for us today. I really would like to begin by getting a sense from the people that you are speaking with on the ground. What is the situation like? What are the worst affected areas? Um, how, how bad is it in Iran? It is really bad, and uh, I don't know why this is not getting the international attention. Uh, 23 out of 31 provinces of, in Iran um, have been hit by the floods. Uh, heavy rainfalls uh, are happening. More is expected to come. Um, uh, people have died. Um, infrastructure have been washed away. Villages have been damaged. Uh, people have died, and a lot of people are now without homes and, and in dire need of um, help, and assistance. They need doctors on the ground. They need uh, uh, food, water. Any, any, they're out of electricity. A lot of uh, cities are, are even gone. And, and this is a pr problem that Iran has not experienced for a long, long time. Is is much has been much more damaging than than the earthquakes that we have uh, recently um, experienced, and and um, uh, it's it's going to get worse because the de the reservoirs are now full, and and it is really hard to to control and and welcome additional water. So it's very difficult for us to get clear information out of the country. What are you hearing in terms of support for the people who are dealing with the images that we're looking at? We're looking at incredible uh, photographs and videos of the flooding in many of these communities. What is the government doing to help these people? So see, we have two two crises at the moment. One is is uh, managing the reservoir and controlling water uh, to prevent additional floods. We ha the, the the guys on the ground has no, have not been successful in in stopping the water. And as an, as as and as I said, it's going to get worse. And the other one is is about helping the victims. Again, um, it is really hard in this situation to help the people on the ground. Different parts of the government uh, government and the regime is is are trying to do something uh, and, and help the people, but it's, it's, it's hard to coordinate. There is a crisis of uh, crisis management, I would say, and, and because they have not been, been ready and prepared for this situation, the country was on a, under a drought for a long time, and it seems that people forgot that a uh, flood has been uh, you know, happening in Iran for a long, long time, and it's, it's not unusual. Kaveh, I want to address the issue of how the government has been handling it because we're hearing from so many people that there's a lot of anger in Iran about the mismanagement, that the government has not made this a priority. You've addressed that, that, that this was something that had been forgotten about because they were dealing with the drought and the lack of water for so long. Why hasn't the government made this a bigger priority? Um, it, it, it is, you know, I, I was on a government and uh, still uh, this is a hard uh, question to answer. Uh, there, the country is dealing with a lot of problems and unfortunately environment was never a priority as it's not in, in many other parts of the world. Um, the, the reality is that uh, people were, I mean, the, the country was f so focused on, on controlling water and, and storing water and, and, and then if they forgot about downstream of reservoirs, uh, people have developed in wrong places. Um, in, in, in river beds, in river valleys, and now a, a little bit of water is, is causing, causing a lot of uh, trouble. Plus, the country has been so uh, paranoid, I would say, about its food security and so, so concerned about food security under international pressure that everything was about, you know, using water for, for additional crops and, and producing uh, food. And, and again, uh, flood was not a concern. A lack of regulation, lack of supervision, and then lack of, you know, uh, I would say, foresight and, and not seeing the future. Plus, add, add the fact that climate change might have exacerbated the situation. We know that under climate change, we will see um, more extreme events. These floods in terms of magnitude and, and, and the geographical um, coverage 
or unprecedented in Iran's recent history. So, so um, the, the system was not prepared for it. The citizens are also surprised. So the amount of water that we are receiving in some places are like, you know, three times more than last year, and we still haven't, you know, six months into the water year. So it's it's a very unusual year that is coming after almost a decade, and, and, and people are not prepared. You know, when you're talking about a country like Iran, Everything, including a flooding situation, becomes political uh, in, in the dialogue around it. And this is no different. So we've heard from the Iranian government um, blaming the Trump administration in the United States, saying that the sanctions are the reason that they're not able to access individuals, get aid out to them. At the same time, we've heard from the Red Cross saying, no, the sanctions have nothing to do with the inability to get the aid out to the people who most desperately need it. So from your perspective, where is the truth? Uh, the truth is always somewhere in between. Um, but what cons you know concerns me is, is the fact that people are are dying and have lost their homes, and then yet the politicians are fighting their 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 political fight. Uh, um, yes, um, it, there, it might be possible to right now transfer uh, goods to Iran, but but yeah, and you can even transfer like food, water, blanket, and other things. But the equipment is also missing. The system is not prepared for it. They don't have what they need. They need planes, helicopters, like troops, um, e equipment, and those things are not there. And of course, sanctions have had an effect. But you cannot blame a disaster like this, the damages of a disaster like this, only on climate change or only on, on your enemies, only on your sanctions. This is a complex problem, complex human nature problems. It has multiple effects, and, and, and there are lots of things. These games are not helpful. What we need is the whole world should pay attention to this. If this was a a terrorist attack under which like 70 people had died, every, every news agency, every me media would, would have covered it. But now people are dying, people are in, in need, and even if the floods stop tomorrow, we know that these people cannot, you know, recover their lives and, 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 and do the, their normal living for a long, long time. West of Iran, a lot of places are poor. They were already poor, and now they're going to be even poorer. Uh, farmers who were waiting for years to receive water, you know, looking at the sky, waiting for water, and now, you know, have even lost their crops and, and are, have been damaged. And, you know, it's, it's really a humanitarian crisis, and I think the whole world should help. And honestly, it's not only about goods and sending money to Iran, it's also about information. Today, someone ask me if I have access to some forecast data of one of, you know, one of the systems because, because of the sanctions, they don't have access to it. Again, I'm not blaming things on the sanctions, but I'm just giving you examples of how even transfer of knowledge and information is affecting the, uh, you know, the people on the ground. Kaveh, we are running out of time, but you have brought this up in your first answer. You've addressed it again now multiple times. The lack of international attention, uh, international governments, international media not really talking about this story as maybe perhaps some other natural disasters get major attention. So why do you think that is? And also, how does that affect the people who are in Iran who are dealing with what we're looking at now? Um, I, I'm sad to say this, but like probably the death toll is not high enough to get get the attention. Plus, we we know how isolated Iran is politically right now. Um, uh, we also know that Iran, the Iranians, um, pride actually don't don't doesn't let them ask for help from the rest of the world. So all these things are just hurting the people of Iran. And I think in a situation like this, the human beings should put put politics aside and help those who are in need, you know, th th what is happening in Iran can happen anywhere else in the world. And, and you know, politicians need to learn th that these are not good times to fight these, these sorts of political fights. Okay, we're going to leave it there. Thank you so much for your time this evening, sir. Kaveh Madani joined us from New Haven, Connecticut.